mentioned that you work in a lot of the pet decisions. Uh, is, isn't it, is it fun designing new pets for like hunters? Even if it's just a visual aesthetic thing, I think it's that's got to be a fun job for you at that point. Oh, totally. Like there's so there's so many different um, avenues you can take there. Like, do you want to make a new family out of it? Should we reconfigure some of the families? But also, are there really cool places to hide them? It's almost like a different kind of rare spawn that only this one particular, you know, couple of specs of a class get to engage in. Um, you, don't tell them, but I probably spend outsized amount of time on the hunter class to, <laughs> do, doing doing pet stuff. It's, it's yeah, it's just really fun. Pets are fun. <laughs> So can you talk about, like, you have, something I want to talk about is uh, you have a new dungeon, a mega dungeon. Like, what is a mega dungeon? Mega Dungeon is a double size of the regular dungeons. We started this concept back in Karazhan, um, you know, back in Legion. And the, originally, the, the idea that we were kind of um, throwing around back then was, uh, and this was, you know, way back in the day of... Um, the initial kind of announcements of WoW Classic and stuff. So, you know, there, there's a lot of discussion going on back then about Classic Dungeons, about, hey, everybody remember, Ubi, you know, UBRS, where you had brought 15 people in there and wasn't that crazy? I remember when you could bring 10 people in Scalamance. I remember. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm old and I'm like 40 now. And I think that one of the interesting things that came out of that discussion was this feeling of having an epic space to explore through. You can tell a great story in a five-man dungeon. Man, you can tell a really just massive story in an, you know, an eight-boss dungeon that takes twice the amount of space. Um, we we kind of missed that idea of getting together with a smaller group of people, like you would kind of with your raid group, and spend a more extended period of time together. You form, you know, the, the great social bonds you do when you go through, like, you know, um, Black Rock Depths back in the day and did all 12 bosses and you stayed in there for three hours. And we were trying to get back to a little bit of that vibe. Um, and overall, I think it's been really successful for us in a couple of different ways. Um, one that just gives a, a slightly different dungeon experience to players um, with the time commitment, uh, but also I think what, what we've, we've found over the years um, is that it gives us an opportunity to often do a very different space. So Karazhan, yeah, we returned to Karazhan. We also went to the upside down side of Karazhan. You get to let the art teams go a little wacky. You get the design teams get to go a little wacky. Uh, Operation Mechagon, exact same thing, you know, crazy robot gnomes. We had to get giant, you know, robot end finale, doomsday device and stuff. And I think you're gonna find really similar stuff in, in Tazavesh. I mean, we go everything, everywhere from uh, an auction house of really weird and fantastical creatures from other portal dimensions to a speakeasy where you play the boss fight by playing instruments like a music fight um, through like a, a area traveling portals. We fight an infinite pirate dragon. It, it's our chance to, to like have a lot of fun. Um, and then I think one of the one of the other fun things that comes out of that is it gives us an opportunity to do a lot of really cool uh, art rewards. Um, so like you're gonna find really neat off the wall stuff here that you really wouldn't find anywhere else in the Shadowlands. Cool uh, otherworldly broker weapons like this sort of arm blade that the brokers have or the kind of uh, electric swords that they're using in there. And so we've got a whole set of weapons in there. We've got a, whole, a, a bunch of pets, including a broker cat and a six eyed rat. Like it, we get to do a lot of really neat stuff there. Um, so plenty of stuff for players to collect there for sure. And you guys are also like in this new Apache, um, we can now fly in the Shadowlands. Can you talk about how players will go about unlocking that um, and being able to do that? For sure. Uh, so unlocking flying in this particular case, super easy. Uh, if you've been keeping up on your Covenant chapters um, on the second week of the patch, you will have enough renown to start the third chapter of our Chains of Domination chapter sequence. Um, this one has you uh, head you know, into Torghast, you're going to do some Torghasty stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil this for all of your viewers here because there's some really big lore moments that kind of finish it off there. Um, but when you come out of there, you, you'll see the next chunk of the storyline happen. Your hub there in Corthia upgrades a little bit. Um, and as a reward, you get the Memory of Sunless Skies, which is an item that you consume. And then uh, all the characters on your account can fly in all of the main four Shadowlands um, shipping zones. Maldraxxus, Revendreth, Ardenweald, and Bastion. Um, and that means that, you know, if you've been keeping up till this point, there's no rep grind here for you. You just have to, you know, do do your uh, your three chapters in Chains of Domination, get some big story reward there, get the renown reward from those, and then we'll throw this in there uh, alongside everything else, uh, and you'll be off and flying on week two. I mean, that's great, because, I mean, I mean uh, there are people who are pretty passionate about how they feel about flying, but I, for one, think it's, it's great when you can unlock it at a reasonable pace. <laughs> I remember I, I, I grinded through Draenor so hard to get flying and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then when I came back after a short break, I came back to start finishing. I'm like, wait, I can fly now. They, you just unlocked it. I was like, praise Azeroth, we can fly. <laughs> I mean, to grind for rep. 
Yeah, I think we we feel like this is the right choice for, for Shadowlands. Um, players have been, you know, spending a lot of time already in those four main zones, so this is a great opportunity for mm. those to feel, you know, fresh, and it felt like you've already got a lot of mastery of those spaces, so uh, yeah, we'll just give it to you. Give it to you on week two, because you you know, you're, you've already been up and down the elevators of Revan Breath. Uh, yeah, dude, probably, doing probably things faster can be a good thing if you've already <laughs> experienced it. Yeah. So. Um, and then I also want to talk about, you guys have listened to the community when it comes to tour gas. you guys have made some tweaks and changes there. Can you go into a little bit of detail about that? Oh, for sure. Uh, so one of the things that we got feedback on initially was, uh, hey, it doesn't feel like I'm really making progress for my character if I'm not able to complete a run. Um, and that, you know, there's a bunch of different reasons for that, whether or not that's time pressure for particular players or skill level, or they just thought it was too hard or they're having trouble getting their item level up. Um, as a general sort of re response to that, one of the things that we've taken a look at is having a meta progression system. Uh, so we added that ability, which gives you sort of constant progression as you're going through the floors of Torghast. So you never feel like you're leaving a Torghast run without at least uh, coming back with something to look forward to next time. Um, kind of similar to what we did in uh, the the Nazoth um, Greater Visions, where you, you always felt like you, you know you could get some currency there even if you weren't able to do everything. Um, so that's one of the things that's just going to make everybody's progress feel a little bit more consistent. Uh, we don't want anybody falling behind and feeling like I can't do this mode at all. We, you know, we want everybody to, to continue feeling like they if and especially if you really enjoy running Torghast, you can continue running Torghast. Um so players will also be of course you know crafting new legendaries new levels of their legendaries uh, so there's a new type of uh soul ash in there soul cinders which are going to allow you to craft these additional higher levels of things um, and then to top it all off we also wanted to put in a system that incentivized players for playing Torghast really well for the players that you know are having a getting mastery over the system uh, and they wanted another level uh there to show off you know that that they can go through it really quickly and, and very efficiently. Um, so we added this, uh, uh, what is effectively um, a, a streak system, where if you're doing really well, you're going to build up a power bar that's going to allow you to unleash a high level of power for a set period of time. Uh, and that gives you the opportunity to uh, increase your mastery but if you're already going fast, if you're already doing really well, it's going to feel like you get this extra bonus on top of it. And then you also have a new a new raid where we're going to fight Kael'thuzad for the second time since <laughs> the Wrath of Lich King, as well as the Zerv Sylvanas. Can you talk about that raid? I, for Kael'thuzad, this is what, like the, the fourth time? Fifth time? <laughs> I can't remember. I've killed him. I killed him a lot for transmog runs mm -hmm. and I always like seeing him because, you know, yeah, this time we're actually going to smash his phylactery. So like you can't you can't come back anymore. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the this is really the inner sanctum of of the jailer. It's the section of Torghast that we've never saw before, where the most hardcore prisoners go for like personal torment. It's also where a lot of his lieutenants have been hanging out. The guy that made all the traps in Torghast, we're going to see him as a boss fight. That was obviously fun to make because it's a whole room that it just has traps everywhere and it's absolutely crazy. Uh, the Kel'Thuzad Zod boss fight, uh, it, they went very much down like the frosty side of things. And even with the art and everything in the room, like, it feels like a frozen room. And then they, they associated that with the content of the fight itself. So you're going to see the frost cover the ground and have gameplay effects. Um, we're going to be seeing some of the worst, you know, souls that we saw in Azeroth over the years. Uh, we'll be seeing, you know, our, our some some of our old friends that uh, we maybe killed in the past that maybe we haven't seen up until now and players were kind of expecting to see so we're going to be seeing some of those expected characters and what their ultimate fate was um, and then like you mentioned not only do we get to you know kill some of the characters that have been haranguing us throughout this whole process in the Shadowlands like the Terra Gru it's one of the first bosses we're going to take out and the Eye of the Jailer we finally get to poke a, a, a dagger into that thing and take it out um, but Sylvanas yeah uh, so for us you know for that large and major of a lore character wow this fight's gonna have to hit a lot of levels not only is it gonna have to be really epic um, both in terms of what her abilities are because man, she's been she's been a, a factor at IGC's I mean she killed Bolvar or tried to got real close <laughs> she killed his hat uh so, so it has to come come through on that end like it needs to feel like we're fighting an absolute crazy awesome character um that has gained this additional domination power the backdrop to the fight needs to be awesome sort of you know what and when we've been kind of ramping that up a little bit what are the stakes of this fight where does it take place what's going to happen next all needs to be sort of a core part of the progress of that fight um and then it needs to have a satisfying conclusion and i think this is one of the most important things to finish this particular content update off um, and help sort of lead us bridge us into the next one is what 
ultimately happens to her at the end. You're gonna find out in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but it, yeah, I mean, these are all things that we've, we've taken very seriously. We've definitely uh, talked about a whole, whole, whole bunch. Um, we wanna make sure that she gets the fight that uh, all the Sylvanas fans really want to see out of Sylvanas. And you've made some major changes to mythic keystones and how they work. Uh, can you talk about how you implemented those uh, fan feedback on those and made them made it a better experience overall for everybody? So a couple of the goals with um, our updates to the mythic system are, well, first, uh, taking a look at affixes. Uh, so, you know, one of the things we're looking at when we're adding the new affixes, we want it to very much change up player gameplay. Uh, we don't want it to be add a huge amount of complexity to the system. Um, and I think one of the ones they've come up with this, this time uh, is a lot of fun. Uh, this one gives you these sort of temporary anima powers. It's very akin to climbing through through Torghast. Uh, and it's, it's another one of those Kiss Cursed ones that have a, a power boost, but then they also have a detriment associated with them. Um, and I think that those are really fun to add sort of in this cycle of the expansion because they add a lot of complexity to the system. So we hope players like that. Uh, and as usual, you know, we're always looking for player feedback on how you guys are feeling about all of our mythic affixes. And if there's any that you want us to cycle out over time, that's something that we're always kind of taking a look at. Um, we usually don't cycle about mid-season, but, you know, uh, we're always open to, to feedback. Um, another one of the things that we're looking at, you know, we really want to take a lot of the goodness of the um, scoring systems that have come up in um, add-ons that players have and incorporate that in a more fundamental way into World of Warcraft. I think one of the things that we've seen is that players without those add-ons, there's a huge just jump in understanding about you know how to get into the mythic system, how to get into the rating system um, that you have to go through that is entirely outside of the game. So one of our goals here is can we bring that rating system in game as a way to make sure that all players are sort of aware that it exists. That's sort of that's step one in terms of getting player knowledge about how do I improve myself and make myself a better mythic dungeon or mythic raider or rogue raider or whatever, right? Um, secondary goal of that is as soon as that number uh, is in game. Uh, we can start to uh, positively align player perceptions around it. And by that, I mean, uh, we can design towards um, helping each other. Is there uh, a way to grant extra valor, for example, if you are doing a Keystone Dungeon with somebody with a lower Mythic score? Yeah, totally. As soon as that number's in game, we can start designing reward systems around it that ideally help players elevate each other in a social context. We want to bring people you know, that are a little bit newer. You want to teach them how to play the game. You want to forge social bonds because we can incentivize you to do so. Uh, so that's kind of one of our general goals there. As soon as we, as soon as that's in game, then we can start designing towards those sort of positive future goals. I think you are muted. When can people experience the Chains of Domination uh, patch and when does it go live? Uh, so Chains of Domination will be live as of next Tuesday. Uh, so really, really soon. Uh, and then the, uh, the raiding season will start the following Tuesday. That's when the, the raid will open on Normal and Heroic.